Well, I indeed, if, if, you, if you wanted to ask how much information is there in the universe, then again, it, it's actually very useful that information is sort of encoded on, on regions that are seen by light rays. You could just ask, well, how far? what is in our past? What is in the region from which light could have reached us up until now? And that, that region is bounded by basically light rays that are just barely making it to your eyes right now, and they've been traveling for billions of years since the beginning of the universe. And those light rays, well, if you follow them back, of course, they come from a larger and larger region as you follow them back that's farther and farther away. But at some point, their surface area actually becomes very small again when, when you follow them all the way back to the Big Bang because everything is small at the Big Bang. The universe is basically contracting to a single point at that, at that, at that point. And so there's a largest area which tells you how much information there is in the universe somewhere between the Big Bang and us that is spanned by these light rays. So, so we can say exactly what the maximum amount of information so, is. So is it, is it the case on some level that the, the function of our senses, I mean, a, 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 you know, Galileo looked at light rays and drew some conclusion about the universe, are tiny sort of instances of the universe conveying in information something that's much bigger that we are now extrapolating to extreme states of the universe, either in terms of the very beginning of time with the Big Bang or the sort of end of matter in a black hole? that they're part of the same story a little bit? Well, the interesting thing about the holographic principle, I think, I think all of us probably agree on this, is that it's a statement that can be made in a situation where we think under, we understand physics very well. Uh, the, the area that describes how much information there is in the universe that we see is not an area that lives somewhere very close to the Big Bang where we might not trust our equations. The area that tells us how much information there is inside a black hole is not an area that's somehow close to the singularity inside the black hole, which we don't understand as well as we would like to. These are areas in regions of space-time that are arbitrarily well understood. They're completely harmless. They're, you know, we, Einstein's theory of Harmless is good. Harm, harmless is always good. <laughs> I mean, I still wouldn't jump into the black hole. But right. it, 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 they are very, you know, well understood areas. The whole statement takes place in a regime of physics that we completely understand. But what we don't understand ultimately is why it is true. It seems like a conspiracy. Every time you check, it works out. And, and I think that by itself, I think, is, it was always a huge piece of right. support for the idea that information isn't lost. All these miracles happen for information not to get lost. It'd be funny if it was at the end. Uh, but, but you funny, have to do it yeah. in a case. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Your sense of humor is not so. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah, right. Well, I love um, apocalypses like the next guy. <laughs>